In this video, let's take a look at server-side authentication. To be more precise, authentication inside the get server-side props function, which caters to server-side rendering. In one of the earlier videos, we learned about client-side authentication, where we get hold of the current session and determine what UI to render. The concept remains the same for server-side rendering as well. We first get hold of the current session, but after that, instead of determining what UI to render, we determine what props to send from get server side props to the component. Let's understand with some code. For our example, we are going to assume this blog page needs to be server side rendered. Back in VS Code, in blog.js, we're going to add the get server side props function. Now, if you're wondering why not get static props, remember get static props runs at build time. Get server side props, on the other hand, runs for every incoming request and will contain information about that incoming request. So, export async function get server side props. Now before we go off and fetch data within this function, we have to determine if the user is logged in. And we do that using the get session function once again. So at the top, import get session from next auth slash client. And then within get server side props, we call it. This returns a promise, so let's await it and assign to a constant called session. But there is one difference between calling get session client side and server side. Server side, you need to pass in the request information. Now, if you remember, get server side props receives a context argument. All you have to do is pass that into get session and next auth will handle the rest. Once you do have the session, you can determine what props to send to the component. Ideally, you would be fetching data if the session is true, but let's keep this simple. Return an object which has a key props, which is again an object. And if the session is set, data is going to be a list of 100 personalized blog posts. Else, data is going to be a list of free blog posts. We can now destructure this data from the component props and render it in the UI. So data from props blog page, and for the JSX, we include the data. All right, let's save the file and head back to the browser. Currently, I'm not logged in, and if I navigate to blog, we see the list of free blog posts. If I sign in, on the other hand, navigate back to blog, we see a list of 100 personalized blogs. This pretty much is server-side authentication with get server-side props, the get session function, along with the context parameter. Now there is one more detail which I would like to cover here. You remember this transition which we added to the nav links? Well, we added that because of the flicker in the sign in and sign out text. Let me quickly show that to you. On the UL tag, let me remove the classes apart from main nav. Go back to the browser, and if I refresh, you can see the flicker is back again. Now you might be thinking, hey, with get server side props, the session is already found out even before the page is rendered can we not somehow use that session and pass it into the navbar component? That way, the session is loaded to begin with 
and we don't have to see the flicker. Well, you are 100% correct. We can pass in the session object as a prop from get server side props. And then on the provider, we can specify a session prop and assign page props dot session. Page props here refers to the props returned from get server side props. Now what happens is that inside navbar.js use session first checks with the provider context if the session is present. If it is, it uses that right away without having to figure out if session is loaded or not. So back in the browser, if we now refresh, we don't see the flicker in the nav links. When the page loads, session is figured out server side and then passed into the navbar through provider and use session. No loading session, meaning no flicker effect. Also, since use session always checks the provider context first, you can call it in any component to get hold of session data. You don't have to destructure session from props. Honestly, they do the same thing, but it is safer to use the use session hook. So in blog.js, import get session and use session. Within the component, const session is equal to use session and then we can log it to the console. We don't need this loading flag because with get server side props, session will always be loaded. You also don't have to destructure session from props and can instead rely on use session. Your code might be more consistent across pages that way. If we now head back to the browser, we have the session data as expected. Now there is one caveat about this. Since session is returned for this particular blog page, navbar will receive the session only when we load this blog page. With other pages, you would not have the session before page load and the flicker effect will persist. So home page and refresh, you can see the sign out text flickering. So let's go back to navbar and put that animation back in. So similar to how this provider component ensured reduction in network calls and page flickers client side, the provider with the session props can guarantee the same server side. Specifying the session prop is again something which is recommended by the next auth library. If you're using SSR, please pass in the session props to the provider in underscore app.js file. All right, now that we know how server side authentication works, in the next video, let's learn how to secure pages server side.